What you see in front of you here on this table and what you're going to hear about in just a minute is our uh, effort from an equipment perspective to implement our, uh, our new protocol in high performance CPR. And that's what you hear it referred to uh, from an industry perspective across the country as high performance CPR protocol. Uh, in Prince George's County, we're answering over 140,000 calls a year. About 112,000 of those are EMS related. 80%, fully 80% of what we respond to are EMS related calls. With, we answer those with 46 basic life support units, 12, those are basic life support transport units, 12 advanced life support paramedic transport units, four paramedic transport, uh, paramedic ambulance transport units, and that is one paramedic and one EMT, and then five paramedic engines, uh, which is one paramedic minimum of one paramedic that rides on the fire engine. We're providing that over 500 square miles, and it's been used as a diverse, the entire county, but also as a diverse as FedEx field, where we have anywhere from 50 to 75,000 people we provide service to on game days. So the equipment you see in front of you, these devices here, you'll hear Roland Bird talk about in a minute, are automatic external defibrillators, referred to as ADs. This grant, or this purchase, had a grant, a purchase, which again, I thank the county council and the executive for approving the budget for us to be able to purchase this. But 161 of these devices will not only go on every one of our fire and EMS delivery uh, units, but also in the, our facilities. The police department, the sheriff's department, the corrections, the county administration building, all of our county facilities will be getting these new uh, automatic external defibrillators. The next thing here, the uh, Life Pack 15, is a replacement of our entire fleet of automatic defibrillators for uh, our paramedic units. Every one of those paramedics will have that 48 of those units in purchase. The Lucas device, which you uh, may have heard of referred to before as that is, uh, in, from an industry perspective, they refer to it as the thumper. That was the original device. The Lucas device, uh, we are receiving 50 of those. Every one of our basic life support transfer units will receive one of the Lucas devices. Another piece that we're highlighting today is our, our technology, our software technology. Uh, and one of the things as we talk about uh, the Affordable Care Act and what that has, is and will do to uh, healthcare in the United States, one of the things that uh, we have taken advantage of in Prince George's County from a software perspective is a program called First Watch. And what First Watch does, First Watch gives us the capability to monitor live from, the, from our PIP what our status is from a performance perspective, both what our units are doing from performance, but also what our call volumes are doing. So in the case of what you see in front of us here, and as we talk about uh, the Affordable Care Act, and, and uh, you'll hear later about it, the continuum of of care in mobile integrated health care, not something we'll probably talk about today, but I'll give you an example. Today, so far, we've had four cardiac arrests in Prince George's County. We've also had four uh, overdoses in Prince George's County. All of this equipment are things that will allow us to respond better to those types of calls. Nationally, on cardiac arrest, there's about a 10% survival rate of those that have cardiac arrest. We know that jurisdictions that have been implemented in high-performance CPR improve the statistical survivability of patients by over 50%, and in some cases, as much as 300% improvement. We hope to replicate that here in Prince George's County. We believe we can do it. We have not only the equipment, but we have the personnel scattered all over the, the, the county in our uh, 45 fire stations that have the training, will receive the training on the new devices over the next few weeks, and certainly have uh, the capability to get this done. So I'm going to, uh, the last part that I'll highlight, again, $17 million worth of uh, apparatus investment over a period of years. Uh, in the ambulances, we have uh, 39 ambulances that we have received. These new red ones, there was an original group of white ones. Each of those costs about $225,000 to $230,000 and another ten to $25,000 in equipment that goes into each one of them. So about $250,000, give or take, is what it takes for us to put one of these units in service. So that investment, I thank you again, Councilman and the County Executive, for the investment over the course of the year to be able uh, to improve service in Prince George's County. But we couldn't do it without our providers. And I want to introduce uh, our next speaker, uh, Captain Roland Berg, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about what these devices do and what the providers will be able to do. Good morning. 
like she said, this is an exciting time in Prince George County where we're able to provide new equipment so that we can provide a quality service to the citizens of Prince George County. Everything we do in the field has to do with quality and providing a good service and also provide the best care we can for our citizens. Can you step a little closer to the microphone? I'm sorry. Double better? So, starting off with our basic analysis, we have these automatic external equipment, like PAC 1000 from Physio Control. They offer us the newest technology that's available in the market, and it also offers us an option that we never had before, and that is the ability to provide pediatric fibrillation to children. The mod devices have the ability to hook up an energy reducing electrode, which will reduce the energy by 75% so that it's an appropriate dose for a child from newborn to eight years of age. Before, we did not have that ability, so now we have that ability to provide that care for children. It's an easy device, it can be utilized by a layperson, it can be used by a first responder, it can be used by a firefighter. They basically just open up the packet, you apply the pads to the chest, you turn on the device, and it prompts you through the various steps of how to operate the device. It will analyze the rhythm, if it's a shockable rhythm, it will tell you to shock the patient, and then it will shock the patient. And then it will tell you to start CPR. After so many minutes, it will tell you to, it's going to analyze again. If it finds a shockable rhythm, it will shock that patient. This is something that makes it very easy for our first responders and for the people to use us and provide immediate care. On all cardiac arrest, we, we on train, on dispatch a basic ambulance and a fire engine and also a paramedic unit. So the, usually the fire engine and the ambulance arrive first, so they're going to be using this AED on the patient. Once the paramedic unit shows up, they're going to arrive with the Lycopac 15 monitor defibrillator, which allows them to do a lot more um, advanced care for this patient. Um, in addition, we also have our, our new lupus device on here. And I'm going to walk around here. So our lupus device that we have here is a, as the chief said, is better known as a thumper. What this allows us to do is to do continuous CPR at a rate of 100 compressions per minute. It can be used on any patient where we can basically put the patient into the device and lock it on. It's very simple. You just simply turn on the device. It does a quick little self-test for about three seconds. You lower the suction cup down to the chest and you basically turn on the device. And it takes over and starts to do compressions at 100 times a minute. And it will continue to do these compressions non-stop until we either pause it and check for a pulse if the patient is regaining pulse or if the patient um, has been transmitted to, transferred to the hospital and the hospital has now taken over the patient care, we can stop it. We can also transport the patient in the back of the ambulance and the providers don't have to stand up to try to do CPR. It's actually a very safe mode in order to transport the patients. If we have to take somebody down a flight of stairs, in the past it was very difficult to perform CPR walking down a flight of stairs. With this on the patient, CPR can continue. The whole high performance CPR is about doing continuous CPR and limiting the hands off time for a patient. This will accomplish that by continuing doing CPR. If I need to pause it, I just pause it, I can check for a pulse. If it has no pulse, I just start it back up again and it takes over again. And this will continue on and on and on. Okay? These devices, obviously, we bought as part of this whole package for $3.3 million. They're running about between $12,000 and $15,000 based on the accessories that you add to it and whether you add the service contract with it. Monitor defibrillators that we see here, okay, they can do so many things now. Not only can they shock the patient, we can also do 12 leads, we can take blood pressures, we can take um, pulse oximetry on the fingers, we can also monitor a patient's carbon monoxide level. Again, something that we had not had to our advantage on monitors in the past. With all the carbon monoxide um, leaks that we have out in the community, and as much as we have tried to educate the public about getting a carbon monoxide detector out there, we still run those calls where we have a carbon monoxide leak and people sick. Now we have the ability to actually monitor in real time a patient's carbon monoxide and determine whether or not that is what's causing them to be sick. We can actually do the exact same care that they're doing in the emergency department when it comes to fall leads, electrical therapy, and stuff. Um, you just basically can hook this up to a patient, you will get a driven.
We can basically do a full leaf. And then we also have the ability to transmit that 12 leaf to the hospital in real time. So these hospitals can actually receive this 12 leaf, the physician at the hospital can see the 12 leaf, can determine if the patient is having a heart attack. And if the hospital has a cath lab, they can notify the cardiac cath lab that they have a patient coming in, and we can then get the patient directly down into the catheterization lab. The whole idea is to try to reduce the amount of time it takes for the patient to get into the cath lab and reduce this door to the time. So this has helped us out a lot. The other option that we have on here is Bluetooth. We now have the ability to transmit data from the device into our Panasonic talk books, which we do our patient care reports on get the data into there, thereby allowing the providers to complete their reports in a quicker time fashion, get a better quality report, and be able to get back in service, be able to get back in the street and work, provide service to the citizens. So everything is about trying to offer you know, high quality to the citizens of uh, Prince George County. <coughs> there is a lot of technology that we have not had this new technology is this new products that we have to give to us. Are you ready for questions? I'm ready for questions. Um, two questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, first, what's a 12 leaf? And the CO2 monitoring, is that in the environment or within the patient's physicality? So let me do a 12 leaf first. What's a lead? 12 lead. A lead is basically when you attach the wires, when you attach the wires to the patient in order for them to see an EKG, to see the heart rhythm on the monitor. You have to attach rhythm uh, leads, wires to the patient's on, on chest. With a 12 lead, you're looking at the heart in 12 different directions, okay? So we can see the heart in 12 different directions in order to see if there's any kind of irregularities in blockages or conduction or any other kind of issues with that. And then we can transmit that to the hospital. The carbon monoxide that we're talking about is the carbon monoxide that's in the patient's blood, okay? So by putting a finger probe on the patient, we can actually monitor the patient's carbon monoxide in his blood. Okay, so that's something that we had not ever had before. In the past, in order to monitor carbon monoxide, we had to take the patient to the hospital. They had to draw all blood from the patient, send that to the lab, and get that analyzed, which would take you know, several minutes or an hour or so. We can monitor this right away. Now, this also has the ability to provide protection to our firefighters. When they're in the fire, and they come out of the fire, and they're feeling ill, we can monitor our firefighters and see if they're suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning, and then we can offer the appropriate care for those firefighters. Any other questions? What do you think the learning curve is going to be on um, getting people in the field comfortable with this? The vendor says that in order to teach a person who has, is experienced in CPR, all of our providers are, one hour to basically teach them how to use that. Okay, just that device, just one hour how to operate that device. It's that simple, okay? And you can apply that device in 15 seconds if you have a trained crew, so that it minimizes the hands-off time when doing CPR. Are there any limitations in regards to um, the patient's size, whether they're overly large or overly small? This will work on any patient that I can fit into that capsule, into that area. So if the patient is able to fit underneath that device, I can do CPR on it. Now, I can't take a small child because the plunger only goes down for so much. So the plunger has to be able to go down and make contact with the chest. If it doesn't, then it's too, the child or the adult is too small for that device. They can fit underneath there and they can lock in place. I can use it on that person. No more questions. If anybody would like to do one-on-one -on -one interviews, the Chief Roland or any of our paramedics are available. Uh, the cost of each unit is in the, on the second page of the press release and the number of units that the county purchased. Your tax dollars in action. Get it on. <laughs>